At sundown, a pleasure ship called the Nelly lies anchored at the mouth of the Thames, waiting for the tide to go out. Five men relax on the deck of the ship, the director of companies, who is also the captain and host, the lawyer, the accountant, Marlowe, and the unnamed narrator. The five men, old friends held together by the bond of the sea, are restless yet meditative, as if waiting for something to happen. As darkness begins to fall, and the scene becomes less brilliant but more profound, the men recall the great men and ships that have set forth from the Thames on voyages of trade and exploration, frequently never to return. Suddenly Marla remarks that this very spot was once one of the dark places of the earth. He notes that when the Romans first came to England, it was a great, savage wilderness to them. He imagines what it must have been like for a young Roman captain or soldier to come to a place so far from home and lacking in comforts. This train of thought reminds Marlowe of his sole experience as a freshwater sailor, when as a young man he captained a steamship going up the Congo River. He recounts that he first got the idea when, after returning from a six-year voyage through Asia, he came across a map of Africa in a London shop window which reinvigorated his childhood fantasies about the blank spaces on the map. Marlowe recounts how he obtained a job with a Belgian company that trades on the Congo River. The Congo was then a Belgian territory through the influence of an aunt who had friends in the company's administration. The company was eager to send Marlowe to Africa, because one of the company's steamer captains had recently been killed in a scuffle with the natives. Marlowe's story of a voyage up the Congo River that he took as a young man is the main narrative of Heart of Darkness. Marlowe's narrative is framed by another narrative, in which one of the listeners to Marlowe's story explains the circumstances in which Marlowe tells it. The narrator who begins Heart of Darkness is unnamed, as are the other three listeners, who are identified only by their professional occupations. Moreover, the narrator usually speaks in the first person plural describing what all four of Marlowe's listeners think and feel. The unanimity and anonymity of Marlowe's listeners combine to create the impression that they represent conventional perspectives and values of the British establishment. For the narrator and his fellow travelers, the Thames conjures up images of famous British explorers who have set out from that river on glorious voyages. The narrator recounts the achievements of these explorers in a celebratory tone, calling them knight errants of the sea implying that such voyages served a sacred, higher purpose. The narrator's attitude is that these men promoted the glory of Great Britain, expanded knowledge of the globe, and contributed to the civilization and enlightenment of the rest of the planet. At the time Heart of Darkness was written, the British Empire was at its peak, and Britain controlled colonies and dependencies all over the planet. The popular saying that the sun never sets on the British Empire was literally true. The main topic of Heart of Darkness is imperialism, a nation's policy of exerting influence over other areas through military, political, and economic coercion. The narrator expresses the mainstream belief that imperialism is a glorious and worthy enterprise. Indeed, in Conrad's time, empire was one of the central values of British subjects, the fundamental term through which Britain defined its identity and sense of purpose.